Hey beautiful people, I'm going to try to make a video every Friday just to give a summary of the struggles that I've um, seen this week. So lots of questions on um, this from distant learners. Remember that all the assignments posted are for everyone. Um, if you are confused, gladly ask a question, but they're always for everyone. Also, the stock market game. I briefly went over that at the beginning of the year. I haven't given anyone any details, distant learner or in class. Right now, I just want you to pick your partners or who you want to work with. It's not like a partner project where somebody's probably going to do more than the other. It really is just a partner that you are going to be able to reflect with so that you'll have someone to ask questions with. It's about investment in the stock market. It's like a real live stock market game. You get fake money to use though. And it's best to have someone that you can say, what do you think we should invest on? Ooh, do you think we should pull out? It's just good to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. So I strongly suggest that you partner with at least one person. There can be a, a maximum of three people in the group. Um, let's see, what else? The quizzes and performance tasks. Please remember that you need to watch the videos before you do them. There are a lot of people who did that performance task that I know didn't watch the videos at all. When you watch the videos, don't watch them like you're watching a TV show. Don't watch them like it's a TV series and turn them on, watch them, and then turn them off. It's not a normal YouTube video. It's a class session. Before the video starts, take out your notebook. Sit down at a nice, quieter place. Even if it happens to be your bed, I don't, you don't need a desk. But sit somewhere where you're comfortable and you can actually digest what's happening. You want to be able to comprehend the notes. So as I'm going over the notes, take notes like you were in class. Because the truth is, when you're at home learning, you have to find a way to learn the same way you would learn in class. It's not impossible to do, although it's hard. But I did get two college degrees online. The best way to get through it is truly when you are researching or studying or watching a video, take that notebook out like you would be in class. Write down the notes that you are watching in the video. If you just watch the video, even if it's repetitive, you'll retain some things, but you really truly will not understand all of them. They are half an hour to an hour long because I record the entire class. So you have to designate that time for you to actually watch the video. I would encourage you to join the Google Meets. Again, I do Google Meets during class time. If you can't do the Google Meet, still reserve that hour or half an hour a day to watch that video. I won't post them every day. However, I will post them after every time there is a class. So every time there's a third period, I'm going to make a video. Um, if you watch the video where I talked about A day, B day, C day, you'll understand there is only one A day for every class period. So I usually only record one of the A days and I post it, one of the B days. As we move along, I'll start learning what doesn't work, what works, and I can help adjust um, how I'm posting the videos, how I'm naming the videos, that kind of thing. But for now, I just try to post the video every time there's a new subject. So if I review functions and then I review function in another class, I'm not going to record both of them. So you got to watch the video. That's really what it comes down to. I don't accept late work. So all the questions that you're answering late after this week, because today's the last day of this cycle, starting cycle three, I definitely won't accept it. There's no excuses. Questions are easy. It's an opinion. Do not write me these emails. I'm getting hundreds of emails every week. And the emails are like, can I write this as an answer? I'm going to not answer those. I'm going to say, put what you feel. Because the truth is, that's me telling you what to put. That's not how it works. Put the answer you think you should put. A student will respond to it. If the answer is incorrect for a question, you don't get parts off for having a wrong answer. You get points off for not answering. The only time you get points off for wrong answers is on quizzes and performance tasks, projects. Everything else is graded on your effort, okay? So you'll get points off if you don't do the work or you don't show your work, but not for the wrong answer as long as there's effort. Um, I think that's it. I do think it's getting better. Hopefully it's getting better for you guys. 
Um, even if you're in class, watch the videos if you feel like you need some extra help. I'm very sorry that we are learning like this because I know it's stressful. It is very stressful for me as a teacher and a mom watching my two children struggle. Um, so we're in this together. We're all struggling. I'm trying not to provide too much work, but enough for you to actually learn. So it's a hard balance. We will get through it together. I want you to have a great weekend. Try to breathe a little bit. Um, you know, have some downtime. There is a quiz due on Sunday. I put it in last at the beginning of this week so that you had a whole week to do it. It's review on algebra. Again, try your best. Remember that Google is also a dumb program, right? Computer programs can't really grade your work like a teacher. So sometimes it's going to give you back, hey, you got 12 wrong. It's not always 12 wrong. I do go back in and actually grade the work. So just give me some time to actually grade after Google grades. Okay. Have a good weekend. Uh, talk to you soon. If you send me a text message, I will try to respond. If you are struggling that bad, take a moment to breathe. Rewatch a video and then try again. Okay? Bye, guys.